Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you all about in situ audiometry and if it can replace real ear measurement. Coming up. Hearing aid technology is advancing at an incredibly rapid pace due to both research breakthroughs and the push from consumers for more modern features and improved sound quality. The result of this constant innovation is that hearing aids today are wildly different in their options and capabilities than hearing aids from even just three years ago. Exciting as that may sound, even the latest and greatest hearing aids will never be able to provide you the maximum amount of benefit without being programmed appropriately. This process, called hearing aid fitting, is a series of actions by a hearing healthcare provider in order to optimize the settings within your hearing aids and ensure that they are meeting your hearing loss prescription. While every provider does things a little bit differently, certain professional organizations, such as the Audiology Practice Standards Organization, have released evidence-based standards for the fitting of adult hearing aids. After analyzing decades of research surrounding hearing loss diagnosis and treatment, 10 leading subject matter experts designed these standards with optimal patient outcomes in mind. These standards include 15 basic services that audiologists are expected to include with every adult hearing aid fitting to ensure that their patient is able to hear their very best. But even with these tried and true standards, surveys repeatedly show that large percentages of hearing healthcare providers do not routinely provide best practice clinical services. And unfortunately, one of, if not the most important procedure to verify the programming of a hearing aid that is often cut during a hearing aid fitting is the use of real ear measurement. Now, the many excuses for this include not having enough time, the cost and minimal experience using verification equipment, and the idea that alternative verification measures will suffice. One such alternative measure is called in situ audiometry. And while it's quick and easy to administer, can it really take the place of real ear measurement? But before I answer that question, please take a moment to hit that thumbs up button to bring videos like these to a wider audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. Now, we talk a lot about real ear measurement on this channel. And if this is the first time that you're hearing about it, you can learn everything that you need to know and more about this critical verification method by watching this Dr. Cliff video that we will also have linked in the description below. The basic concept concept of real ear measurement is to measure the amount of amplification you are receiving from your hearing aids inside of your ear canals and adjust the amplification levels to match your hearing loss prescription. Real ear measurement is the only way to objectively verify that your hearing aids are programmed correctly. Without this measurement, you're left at the manufacturer's best guess, which will never allow you to hear your best. And while it would seem like a no-brainer that this would be crucial for dispensing hearing aids, fewer than 30% of hearing healthcare providers actually complete this measurement. Yikes. Now, choosing not to complete real ear measurement is one thing, but with the rise in consumer demand for real ear measurement over the past several years, I've now heard from dozens of frustrated and dissatisfied patients who have explicitly asked their providers to complete this measurement only to be met with one of three excuses. The first is often that real ear measurement is unnecessary given the fact that the hearing aids come pre-programmed from the manufacturer. However, this pre-programming is only an estimate that's based on your hearing loss, your age, and your gender. The manufacturer first fit also does not take into account your own personal ear canal characteristics which can wildly change the amount of amplification needed across different frequencies and for different presentation levels. This fact was proven in a 2012 study by Drs. Ron Levitt and Carol Flexer, who found that even an old analog hearing aid programmed using real air measurement outperformed more modern digital hearing aids that were programmed without using real air measurement especially when it came to understanding speech in background noise. The second excuse that I hear is that real ear measurement is an outdated procedure, which couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, as technology has improved, real ear measurement now allows hearing healthcare professionals to test and verify nearly any hearing aid setting in order to confirm its performance. Real ear measurement systems can verify hearing aid performance for soft, average, and loud input levels 
to ensure there is an appropriate amount of volume for each. Additionally, these systems now boast the ability to present speech signals in a variety of different languages, ensuring that you will have access to the speech sounds within your native language. Providers can even evaluate the performance of noise reduction settings and ensure that the maximum power output of your hearing aids never exceeds your own uncomfortable loudness levels. I find real ear verification equipment to be the most advanced hearing aid verification tool that hearing healthcare providers even have. So to call it outdated, it's quite the stretch. But the third and perhaps the most frustrating excuse that I hear as a reason for not needing to run real ear measurement is that in situ audiometry is the same thing. In situ audiometry is an option that's available in nearly all hearing aids that allows providers to complete almost like a hearing screening through the hearing aids while they're in your ears. During this screening, pure tones are presented through the hearing aids rather than playing them through a set of headphones or earphones inside of a sound booth. This procedure is completed in each ear individually from 250 hertz through 6,000 hertz and the results take the place of your original hearing test, which updates the manufacturer first fit programming. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, well, if this test is being run while the hearing aids are in my ears, then what makes this test any different than real ear measurement? First, this test is often delivered in a hearing aid fitting room rather than in a soundproof booth, which can allow environmental noise to interfere with your results. Second, the piece attached to your hearing aid for this test, whether it be a rubber dome or a custom ear mold, can wildly change your results, making it difficult to consider them reliable. Third, this test does not take your hearing loss prescription into account. Your responses only take the place of your results from your initial hearing test, which are almost certainly more accurate. To summarize, in situ audiometry is not measuring the output of your hearing aids in response to speech signals at various levels to ensure that you're meeting your hearing loss prescription like real ear measurement. No, no, no. In situ audiometry is a quick way to retest your hearing through your hearing aids rather than in a sound booth. Now, if you're like me and you want some evidence that in situ audiometry is not the same thing as real ear measurement, then make sure you hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you get an alert every time we put a new video on the channel because part two of this video is coming up and I am gonna prove it to you. Now, don't get me wrong. This test does have some clinically useful aspects, especially as it can often be completed remotely. For example, if you were a long distance patient and you were concerned that maybe your hearing had changed, in situ audiometry would allow your hearing healthcare provider to quickly screen your hearing and compare those results to your previous testing. If any major differences in tests were found, then an in-person appointment could be scheduled for a diagnostic hearing evaluation and for a maintenance check of your hearing aids. Another useful application of in situ audiometry is for patients with fluctuating hearing losses, such as those with Meniere's disease. A characteristic trait of this condition is hearing loss that changes in severity, often aligning with changes in vertigo. During a severe vertigo episode, a patient may not be able to make it into the clinic for testing, but may be able to complete in situ audiometry remotely. This can give their provider better insights to the changes that occur during these episodes and allow their provider to make remote programming adjustments quickly, which can be critical in these circumstances. While in situ audiometry can be an extremely helpful tool in a pinch, it should only be used in instances where in-person evaluation is not an option. Like we saw during the COVID-19 pandemic, for long distance patients that can't make it into the office quickly, and for patients that are perhaps in the hospital. Put simply, in situ audiometry is a great way to enhance your hearing treatment experience, but only after in-person evaluation and verification has been completed. Unfortunately, this test does not take the place of real ear measurement by any stretch of the imagination, and they certainly should not be referred to interchangeably. Overall, the amazing hearing aids offered today are only as good as they are programmed for your own hearing loss needs and goals. While the research continually points to comprehensive best practices as being the best way to ensure optimal hearing treatment outcomes, be on the lookout for providers cutting corners or trying to pull a verification 
switcheroo. Now, if you want to find a hearing health care provider who will follow comprehensive best practices, including real ear measurement, without you even having to ask for it, be sure to visit hearingup.com. There, you'll find dozens of providers who already follow the 15 standards set forth by the Audiology Practice Standards Organization as a part of comprehensive best practices so that you can hear your very best.